Welcome to another exercise for the workbook statistics. This time focusing on the topic of measures of distribution. Our task here is as follows. The income, as in hourly wages, of the employees of a local meat processing plant are distributed as follows. Now we have our information here for the different workers and we have two tasks to perform. First, calculate the average income and the corrected standard deviation of the hourly wage. Part B, calculate the corrected skewness and kurtosis of the data set and interpret the results. And well, we only have part A because we need this as input for part B. So let's start with part A. What we're going to do here first is calculate the average or the mean. And this is simply summing up all the observations, dividing them by the number of observations. So we could sum all of this up or we could have summarized this a little bit because we see like the 11, we have tw uh, four times here, we have the 12 two times, the 13 two times. So we could have shortened this a little bit. At this point, it doesn't really matter, but we keep this in mind for the second part. So if we do this here, summing all up, going divide by 10, we get as a result an average of 12 hours, uh, 12 euros per hour. That's the first part. Based on this, we can calculate the variance. First off, we have the correction factor, which at this point is simply number of observations divided by number of observations minus one. So 10 divided by nine. And in the first brackets, in this part, we are summing up the squared value. So we go 12 squared, 11 squared, 13 squared, 11 squared, 11 squared, and so forth. For, well, brevity's sake, we have 12 two times, so I'm getting two times 12 squared. Plus, we have 11 four times, I go four times 11 squared. Two times the 13, so two times 13 squared. That's the first part, again, divided by the number of observations. And then I subtract the mean, the average I calculated earlier, also squared. So the part in this larger brackets, that's the uncorrected variance. So this part here is the uncorrected variance multiplied with the 10 divided by 9, the correction factor gives me the corrected variance. And if I take the corrected variance and simply take the square root of this, I will get the standard deviation. So here, square root of 2.8 period gives me 1.6997, a standard deviation of the data set. That's already part A. We have the mean, we have the standard deviation. And we use those two to calculate our skewness and kurtosis in part B. So starting with this, we copy the two values we had from before. Now we start with the skewness. The skewness is more or less each of our values standardized, meaning from each value, I'm going to subtract the mean of 12, and then divide the result by the standard deviation of 1.6997. These standardized values are taken to the power of 3, summed up, and then divided by 1 divided by, uh, multiplied with 1 divided by n minus 1, number of observations minus 1. We have the minus 1 here because the task set corrected version corrected skewness. So again, for each value, the standardized version, 0, 0 0.5883. And again, we have all of these values, in some cases more than once. So we can make this a bit shorter. As before with the variance, we can also make the calculation here shorter or if you actually want to do this step by step by step, you can do calculate this really for each value once. 
sum up all of these expressions after taking them to the power of 3, dividing by 9, that's the part here, I can multiply with 1 ninth or I can simply divide the result by 9. This will give me a skewness of 1.2219. The important part here, this skewness is positive. And that's the important aspect because, well, skewness could also be negative. It's a power of 3. This could be negative. That's actually what tells us whether this is rightwards or leftwards skewed. 0 is one thing, uh, smaller than 0 is one thing, larger than 0 is the other. 0 means it's symmetrical. Here in this case it's positive. If it's positive, this means the distribution is rightwards skewed. If this were negative, it would be leftwards. Well, that's skewness. However, once you get this idea, you can also easily calculate the kurtosis. Because it's more or less the same as before, except for the 3 up here, we get a 4. So we do the same thing as before, replacing the 2 to the power of 3 with 2 to the power of 4. Again, we also divide this by 9. And then, if we calculate this whole expression, we get as a result 3.7009. The important value to consider here is 3, because, well, it's to the power of 4, so it could be 0 or something positive. Why are we going to consider 3 as an important value here? Because the normal distribution has a kurtosis of 3, so we are always comparing with the normal distribution. Is the distribution more heterogeneous, more homogeneous as compared to the normal distribution? If is it flatter or steeper in the middle than the normal distribution? That's what the kurtosis tells me. Here I see 3.7. That's larger than the 3 from the normal distribution. So in other words, this means it's leptokurtic. Leptokurtic, it's smoother. It's more heterogeneous than the uh, normal distribution. Well, that's then everything there is to this exercise. So we calculated mean standard deviation and then skewness and kurtosis and argued what these values actually mean. Well, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed it. I say goodbye and see you next time.